everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to put together some more color combinations because this has been requested over and over again. <laughs> And I've seen so many of you use my previous color combinations that I've showed you and you apply them to an entire coloring page and you've been sharing them in my Facebook group. I've had some of you come to my private coloring classes with me and you showed me how you've used some of my color combinations. So I wanted to go ahead and do another one of these and I took a look at the last one I did. This one's going to be for Prismacolor and I took a look at the last video to make sure none of them are overlapping and I noticed in the last one let me go ahead and show you the last one but this was the last one and the color combinations that I shared with you and this sheet is actually available in my Etsy store I will have the link down below so that you could grab this color combination um, chart so that you can swatch out all your own colors or follow along with the video or even use it to put together some of your own color combinations so I noticed in this one I have a lot of oranges and reds and variations of that sort and just a couple purples but this purple is pretty pinky purple and quite a few greens so I'm going to try to change it up a little bit in this video I've got a couple that are muted I've got more blues because I only shared two blues in this one and so I've got some things that are a little bit different and then I believe I have one that is some browns and two different variations that look really really pretty together and I'm going to show you how to really make browns pop and just put a little bit of a different twist on it. If you check the description box down below, I always have links down there for my email list as well as my Facebook group. I would love to have you come join us in my Facebook group. It is a huge group. We are almost at 6,000 members and everybody is so supportive and wonderful. So come and join us. I also have a link down there for my Etsy store and I'm also now teaching private coloring classes. If you would like to take some classes, I would love to meet you. So let's go ahead and get into this video and start swatching out some of these gorgeous color combinations that I put together. Let's go ahead and start out with some greens. I've got three colors here and I'm going to show you how beautiful these come together. These actually um, came up in a private class that I was doing when we were trying to plan out a coloring page and I thought they were so beautiful together so I wanted to be able to share them with everyone. So we've got peacock green as our first color and I'm just going to pull this down a little bit and lift up just a bit so that I could come into my transition area and then I've got true green and I'm going to pull this one down here and then I've got my last color. This one is eggshell and look how this just makes this pop. It is so pretty. I love eggshell for so many different combinations. I put it with blues and greens and you could put it with your red-orange combinations. Now I'm just coming back in the opposite direction. I don't think I pulled this one down far enough, so I'm just pulling this one down a little bit more into our true green. And let's get another layer down here so you could really see how pretty these look together and how they really, these two colors, they've just got such a difference in value. And then these two colors here, they are so contrasting from one another that it just really makes it pop and it just comes together so beautifully. Now, I know someone mentioned in one of my last videos that I wasn't, um, you know, laying all the color down and burnishing them all together. And that's really just for the sake of the video and the amount of time that if I were to do that on every single one of them, it would make the video go on rather long. So to avoid that, I'm just going to lay down a few la layers and show you how the colors come together. And when you put them on your swatch sheet, or if you follow along with this video, you can make sure that you blend them all together so you could really see how they look together. But we've got peacock green, true green, and then we've got eggshell. And look how pretty those are. And I love to share green color combinations because they are so wonderful for leaves. And so let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I'm going to do another green color combination for you that is absolutely beautiful. I know that a lot of us are coloring in Joanna's books or some other books that have leaves and flowers. So I like to share a lot of colors that are going to look good when we are coloring leaves or flowers. So this first color is Prussian green and then I am going to come in with apple green and this is just really going to make it pop. 
Look how pretty that is. Apple green is one of my favorite colors. Y'all have to let me know in the comments what your favorite colors are in the Prismacolor set. Now, I am using the 150 set. Some of you may only have like a smaller set, but the 150 set is actually on a really good deal as of right now. I think it's only like $75, so it's probably not really the time to go out and buying budget sets <laughs> if you don't already have Prisma colors because right now you can get them on Amazon's for so cheap and I will make sure that I link that down in the description box below. So this was, that last color that I used was the sage green or pale sage. I think it's called pale sage. Mine is so teeny tiny that you can't see it anymore. Let's come back and just lay down another layer so you could really see how these colors look together. Again, like I said, I'm not going to lay down too many layers just to save the length of the video. And I want y'all to be able to follow along and grab all these color combinations and put them all on your own sheet. And again, this sheet is available in my Etsy store and I will have that linked down below now this is Prussian green I'm trying to make sure I spell it right and I don't know it really doesn't matter if I don't I guess <laughs> you all know which color it is so apple green and I've got pale sage and look how pretty those are together they just really complement one another so nicely so those are our greens and let me see, what do I want to move on to now? I think I'm going to go ahead and move on to my blues now. So let's go ahead and put together some blues. I've got some really pretty ones. Oh my goodness, and my leads on my pencils are so not sharp. <laughs> but that's okay, I'm just putting uh, colors together for y'all. So I've got violet blue for this next one. And like I showed you in my last video, it's okay to go harder at the top. And then as you're coming into the transition area, you will just lift up just a little bit and then start here at the top of the transition and then pull that color down and again, lift up just a little bit. This one is Blue Lake. And then I'm gonna come in with my lightest color, which is absolutely beautiful. Y'all know how much I love, this is cloud, um, cloud blue, but y'all know how much I love the light, light Prismacolor colors all the light or the light blues in the Prismacolor set. They are just so, so beautiful because they're so hard to get in other sets. So I'm coming back here with my violet, violet blue this is actually. And I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit more and go in the opposite direction to fill a little bit of that white of the paper. And then I've got Blue Lake and I'm gonna pull this down into my, what was that, cloud blue? Yep, cloud blue. And then I'm gonna come in here at the transition, use a little bit harder pressure to get a really nice blend and pull that one down into its own space. But look how pretty those are together. So I've got violet blue. And then the next one is blue lake. And then the last one was cloud blue. I know a lot of you sometimes ask me what I use to fill out my swatch charts. This is the uh, Sarasa clip pens. They're my absolute favorite. I use them for journaling and for planning and things of that sort. But I have found that they are really wonderful because they are 0.5 and the ink doesn't really spread, especially on the Spring Hill paper. It works very, very nicely. So I like to use it, especially on the swatch charts that I have available in my Etsy store as well. Um, the 100 and, 120 swatch chart, I think, I just put in my Etsy store, as well as the 72 swatch charts that I have available. And so when there's a very small space, I like to go ahead and use those. Now we're going to go on to more blues. So I have Imperial Violet, which I don't think I've ever used much. I actually just sharpened this one. But this is a really pretty color. So Imperial Violet. And then I've got Blue Violet Lake. And look how pretty these go together. And look how pretty that color right here at the transition area where the colors are blended together, look how pretty that comes out. They just blend together so nicely. And then I'm going to come in with this one with another really pale, pale blue. If you saw my video where I showed you all my favorite pastel colors in the Prismacolor set, you know that all of these light blues in the Prismacolor sets are my favorites. <laughs> Let's come back with, that was the powder blue, I don't know if I mentioned that, but I think that I'm going to use each one of the light blues in a color combination, I think. So um, yeah, I have one more blue. So this one is, this one's more like a blue purple, bluish purple, but I'm going to come down and pull this into the other color and just add another quick layer here. 
And then I'm going to come back and do it again with my Blue Violet Lake, which is a really pretty color. I don't even know if I mentioned that before that this was Blue Violet Lake, but this is Blue Violet Lake. Of course, when the video is done, y'all will be able to pause the video and see all the names filled in and everything if I fail to mention something. And then I've got my Powder Blue. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Okay, now know when you're burnishing your colors together, you could always use your lightest color or you could come in with the white. If you come in with the white, a lot of times though, it does, um, Imperial Violet, it does uh, whiten up and really lighten up your colors. So if you want to keep your darkest color that you're using for shadows, um, you will if you use your white to burnish your colors together. You'll have to come back and go over that again. So Imperial Violet, yeah, you'll have to go over it again with your darkest color. So then I've got Blue Violet Lake. And then my last one is Powder Blue. And look how pretty that is. So let's come over here. And I think I have one more blue combination. I've got actually, well, the other one is more like a teal blue that I have. But these are really, really pretty. And I love doing blues. And this pencil looks like I never even sharpened it or it wasn't used yet. So I don't use this color too often. But here is China Blue. Gosh, I really should have sharpened it, right? <laughs> I'm always telling y'all, make sure your pencils are nice and sharp, and I'm over here doing this. Let me sharpen my pencil. Okay, so now they're all beautiful and nice and sharp. <laughs> okay, so now I have the blue slate, and I'm going to come in here at the transition and pull this color down. Look how pretty these are together. I think they match my nails. <laughs> And then I have my absolute favorite out of the light blues because it's just so bright and poppy. I've got the sky blue light. I love, love, love this color. And look, see, these Prisma colors are so soft. I had it nice and sharp and it just broke off just a little bit. Okay, so let's come back in with our China Blue. This color is gorgeous. I don't know why I never use this. So we've got China Blue. We're going to pull that down into this mid-tone here. And then we're going to come back with the mid-tone and we're going to put another layer down here. And then we are going to come back again with our sky blue light. Look how pretty. Now if I really came in and I really darkened those up, oh my gosh, this china blue, that would be so bold and beautiful. So china blue, blue slate, and then the last one is sky blue light. And I think that might be, no, we have one more blue one more. I think they have a little bit of teal or something in them. Let me see here. Okay, so yeah, we've got peacock blue, which is a little bit different. So we're going to start this one. This one has a little bit of green in it. So yeah, these are more on the teal side. So we've got our peacock blue, and then we are going to put electric blue with this. Look how pretty. <laughs> Oh, I love this one. Look how pretty that is. This is another one we put together in one of my classes. This is also the sky blue light because I'm going to show you how you could take any of the teal colors or the colors that have, you know, are more of a teal tone. You could take those and use your very light blues to really give them a little bit of pop. Okay, so I'm going to come back in here and just go over with my darkest color. Again, this is the peacock blue and I'm going to pull that down into my mid-tone. Then I am going to grab my electric blue and pull that down into my sky blue light. And then I'm going to go over again with my sky blue light. But look how gorgeous that is. I love, love, love that. It's so, so pretty. Okay, so peacock blue. And then I have electric blue. And then the last one is sky blue light. And I think that is all the blue combinations that I have. Let's go ahead and move to a purple combination. This one is really, really pretty. Okay, so I have violet. So this is just the regular violet. Up here I used uh, violet blue. So, oh, and I used the imperial violet. So this is just the regular, just violet. And so let's go ahead and lay that down here. Really, really pretty color. And then with that, I am going to put the lilac. And so I'm going to lay that down there and put it into the transition and pull it down into where I'm going to lay my highlight. Look at the contrast between these two and how they come together so beautifully. And this one has a little bit of pink in it. And so it's kind of like a pinky purple. And then so I'm going to take that and I'm going to add the deco pink in here. And look how gorgeous that is. That is so pretty. So let's just come back now and lay another layer so we could really see 
the color in this. And then I'm going to come back with my lilac and I'm going to lay another layer of that down. Of course I'm going to go a little lower where I come into the transition area. And then I'm going to come in with my deco pink. Look how pretty that is. Okay so let's go ahead and write those in. So we had violet and then lilac and then my favorite or one of my favorites deco pink. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on to another one. Now we're gonna move into one that has a little bit of red in it. So we're gonna start with permanent red, which is a reddish orangish color. And it's really, really pretty. So we're gonna lay some permanent red down here. And then I am going to add to that the pink. And look how pretty that is. The contrast is just beautiful. And then the last one is going to be Deco Peach, so I'm changing it up a little bit. But this Deco Peach does still have a lot of pink in it. It looks, I don't know, its it looks pink to me, but it is peach at the same time. It's a very different color. It's very, very pretty. But look how those look when they just come together. So we've got our permanent red. And I'm just going to lay this other layer down here as I come into the pink. And then I am going to lay the pink down. And if I didn't mention, this is the Spring Hill paper. I always have a link down in the description box for this paper. But this paper does have quite a bit of two. So if I wanted to come in here and start filling all of these in and burnishing them out, I would be here for a little while <laughs> trying to film this video. So permanent red. But this paper is absolutely wonderful for your coloring pages. If you're printing out your PDFs or even copying out of a um, copying out of a coloring book. It is wonderful paper. This time I have some colors that would be beautiful um, when we start getting getting into like you know the fall and we're coloring a lot of like pumpkins and things like that. These colors look absolutely beautiful you know for pumpkins or anything on your pages like your scarecrows whatever you're coloring that is a fall theme. So I've got uh, pumpkin orange and then to the pumpkin orange I'm going to come in with the golden rod and look how gorgeous these look together. These are just so pretty together and then to really just brighten that up and now, if you look at these colors, they're rather muted. So this color, Jasmine, is a beautiful color that is sort of muted, but it still has a little bit of brightness to it. So when you add that in, it's going to give it the pop that you're looking for. And you know how I always say I love to see anything I'm coloring on my coloring pages just to really pop off the page and have all that extra depth and dimension. Now with any one of these color combinations that I'm showing you today, you can take other colors and add them in to these colors. Like I could even take this one where I've got this um, pumpkin orange and I could add something else in here that's like a brownish orange and add a whole lot more shadows and create a whole lot more depth, depth and dimension. So pumpkin orange. And then the next one was goldenrod. And the last one was jasmine. And those are so beautiful together. Now I don't think I put together another orange combination. I have one other one that is a little bit different. So let me go ahead and grab that. So I did have another red combination that I wanted to be able to put together for you. And I checked my other sheet and it's not on there. But this is really, really pretty. I've got crimson red. I'm going to lay some of this down there. And then I have pink so I'm using the pink again just like I did up here on this one we're just changing it up a bit so I'm gonna put my pink down here and look at the difference in these two colors and how they're just they just contrast from one another and they're just so pretty when you put them together and then of course I have my favorite which is my deco pink to bring it all together and really just add that pop that we're looking for on our coloring pages. So let me go ahead and lay another layer down here of this one. And then I'm going to come back with my pink. I'm trying to fill a little bit more of the white of the paper here. Just so you could see how beautifully these come together. And this deco pink, it's really, really light. But the more layers you add, you can see that it really does have quite a bit of pigment in it. And it's just a beautiful pale, pale pink. It's so pretty. Okay, so we have crimson red and then pink and deco pink. I love those colors together. 
So let's go ahead and move on to another one. Now this one, in my last video where I did Prismacolors, I didn't show you any of the, um, or any browns. I never put any browns together. So I wanted to be able to do that in this video. And I'm gonna show you the color combination one way, and then I'm gonna show you how you could really just change it up. So the colors that I have in the first one are going to be um, Dark Umber, Light Umber, and then putty beige. And look how pretty these are when they come together. So let's go ahead and lay down the dark umber. This is just a beautiful, beautiful dark brown. So pretty. And then I'm gonna come back with my light umber. And this is more of a medium tone brown. And then I've got this uh, putty beige, which is a really pretty color that I don't even use that often, but look how pretty it is when I lay it down in this color combination with these colors. I'm gonna come back over and lay my dark umber down. Now, the dark umber, it is a pretty pigmented color. So if you're trying to create depth on your coloring pages and you're using the dark umber, I would go very, very lightly just to make sure you don't lay too much of that color down on the paper where you don't want it. So this is my light umber. And then I am going to come back and pull that down into my last color, which is the Putty Brit Beige. Now these colors um, would look beautiful if you were coloring something like wood grain, or if you were doing something like maybe a scenic one where you were doing like a fence around a house or something, or even an animal. That would look really, really pretty. If you were using this for an animal, once you laid all of your strokes down and the colors just layered one on top of the other, it would be so, so pretty. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we've got dark umber, and then I've got light umber, and then putty beige. Now what I'm gonna show you is I am going to get rid of the putty beige, and I am going to do this color combination again, and I would just wanna show you that like, you could take any two of these colors on this entire sheet, and you could change it up by just swapping out one color. So in this case, I am going to do the dark umber again and I'm going to pull it down here into the center then I'm going to come in with my light umber again and pull it down into the highlight area as I lift up on the pressure of the paper or the pressure of my pencil and then I have rosy beige. Now look what a twist this just adds on to this color combination. Look how pretty that is. I absolutely love that. But look how they just like, I when I put them together, I was like, oh, I don't know. And then, I don't know, I'm going to try to use them on an object in a coloring page and see how they come together. If you want to see me do a video where I bring my color combinations to a coloring page and show you how they look together, you need to let me know in the comments below and I would be glad to do that. But look how this just changed it up and you could see the two of these right next to one another. And that was my point why I wanted to put them one right next to another because I wanted you to be able to see what they look like when you just change out one thing. But I have a video I still need to edit that is supposed to be going up on Friday, which right now it's Thursday, so it's tomorrow for me. And I've got so many classes tomorrow that I was not going to be able to edit or do anything else. So I was filming this video and trying to get another one in that sort of coordinated or went right along with that other video. But in that video, and I'll link it in the upper right hand corner, in that video I actually show you how I came up with a color combination and how to put the colors together. Okay, so we got light umber. Let me just concentrate for one second. And then we've got rosy beige. Okay, so in that video, I showed you how to put your colors together, how to choose your colors so that they come together beautifully. And then I brought it over to a coloring book and showed you exactly how to use them in a coloring book. So that video I will link in the upper right hand corner and because that one should be up before this one is. So let's go ahead and see what else we can come up with. Okay, so here's another beautiful combination that um, we put together in one of my classes for a coloring page. I just thought it was so beautiful that I wanted to make sure I showed it to all of you. This one is uh, Beige Sienna. Look how pretty these colors are. And then this is Peach Beige. But this goes together just so pretty. 
And I'm going to lay down another layer of these colors so you all can see them and how they just come together so beautifully. And they're all very muted colors, but once they come together, they just look so pretty together. And then I've got the beige peach, but look how pretty that is. Okay, so sandbar brown, and then beige sienna, and then the last one is peach beige. But look how pretty those go together. I really, really love those. Okay, so let's see what we can come up with next for another one here. So now I wanna show you a twist on the peach beige and another combination you can put together for that one. Now this is gonna be a more muted color combination, again, just like this one was, but we've got chestnut as our darkest color, and so I'm just gonna lay some of this down here. And I'm trying to share colors with y'all that I've not shared before, or combinations that I've not shared before. And then I've got Clay Rose, which is a gorgeous color, again, more muted. And then I'm going to use my Peach Beige, and look how pretty that is. And they all just come together so beautifully. So let me go ahead and just lay another layer of this one down and pull it into the other color. And then I've got my clay rose and then my peach beige. But look how gorgeous that is. Let's go ahead and write in the names of the colors. So we had chestnut and clay rose and then we had peach beige. Since I only shared one orange color combination, I'm going to do another one. So I've got mineral orange, and I'm going to lay some of that down here. And this one is pretty close to the pumpkin orange that we used previously, but it's a little bit lighter. And then I've got peach, which I'm going to use as my mid-tone. And then I am going to give it a pop of color with this deco peach. Look how pretty that is. So let's come back and do another layer of this and pull it down into the peach. That was our mineral orange. And then we're going to lay the peach down again and pull that into our deco peach. And then we are gonna add this pop of color with the deco peach. And look how pretty that is. So mineral orange and then peach and deco peach. Okay, so we have one last color combination and for this one I'm going to mix up some colors just a little bit that are a little bit different. So I've got this mahogany red that is a beautiful dark dark red color and I'm gonna lay this one down here. And these colors I think are very different than what I, or these red color combinations are very different than the red color combinations that I shared with you previously, because I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to use Nectar for my mid-tone. And look how different that is. You see how those two just contrast from one another? That is just so pretty. And then I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. And then I am going to give it a pop again with my Deco Peach. And look how different and bright and beautiful that is because this just, this Deco Peach, adding that Deco Peach in there, it just really changed the way those colors come together. Now, of course, I can come back and change out that highlight color to something else had I wanted to and it would change the entire look of how those colors all come together as one. But I think that the Deco Peach looks really, really pretty, but there's several other colors that you could choose to add to that to really just change it up. So let's go ahead and add those names in there. So Mahogany Red. Yeah, I wanted to show y'all a few more. Instead of doing everything that's so bright and vibrant all the time, I wanted to bring you a few that were a little bit more muted because there is a time and place for those on our coloring pages. And sometimes you can create something absolutely beautiful with some of those muted colors. I know so many of us are always reaching for those colors that are so bright and vibrant, but you can put together some more muted tones and you can add in something that is really going to make it pop. Like if I look over here at this pumpkin orange and this goldenrod, when I put this jasmine in here that is a little bit muted, but still has a pop of color, I am really changing the way that those colors look. It's really just adding that pop that you need on your coloring page. And then sometimes you do need some colors that are a little bit more muted, like this combination here. And this one is really beautiful just because 
these colors are contrasting from one another. So when you lay these more muted colors down, like the chestnut and the clay rose, and then you add this peach beige to it, it's really going to stand out because that peach beige is really going to make that combination stand out on your coloring page. And then of course over here, we use the deco pink to really make these colors pop out. And I just really love how these all came together. And then this one, I absolutely love too. The mahogany red with the nectar and then the deco peach just really makes it go pow. So you don't always have to use all the bright poppy colors. Try to go to some of the colors in your Prisma color sets that you don't generally choose. I think that our eye just automatically draws us to the colors that really pop and are just bright and vibrant and I do the same thing. I look at my Prisma color set and I am just drawn to the colors that are so bright and just pop off kind of like you know this color combination up here the permanent red the pink and the deco peach and that's why I love all my highlight colors but sometimes you need to just go to some of the other colors in your Prisma set and really experiment with them because that is how you become more familiar with your colors. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you want to grab this sheet, this is available in my Etsy store. I'll have a link down below so that you can go grab that. It's actually a bestseller in my Etsy store. So I'm so excited about that. Thank you all um, for all of you that have supported me and purchased this already or purchased anything in my Etsy store because I really, really appreciate you. It really helps out my channel a whole lot. So I will see you all in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.